So even though I moved out of my childhood home more than two years ago now, I've just never really settled in and started buying my own furniture, especially my own bookshelves, until now. And since I'm so excited about being an adult and having my first full bookshelf in my own place that I actually pay for, I'm going to show you my very first bookshelf tour. So one thing that no one really tells you about, about moving, is that sometimes you don't always take everything at once, especially if you're moving out of a place where other people are still staying. Like in my instance, when I moved out for college, obviously my parents were still staying at my parents house and I was leaving. While I was living in dorms I would bring books back and forth because I was close enough to home to do that but now that I'm halfway across the country I can't just pop in the mom's house and say hey I'm gonna grab my home games books and then I'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah that doesn't really happen anymore. When I moved I had to decide which books to bring with me and I decided instead of bringing all my favorites although I would have loved to have them all displayed in my room it brings me comfort to have my favorite titles like sitting there where I can see them but it wouldn't really be useful consumption wise to bring books that I've already read and will not be reading again for a long time so I decided instead to bring all my books that I haven't read. So this entire shelf is full of books that I have not read. That's not entirely true. I have read about five of these books because I have had them with me here for a while and I am slowly but surely making my way through them. But for the most part, this shelf is entirely unread. I've always had this plan to have a massive library in whatever house or apartment or whatever I lived in. And like we're getting there, we're building up to it. But for the time being, I have finally purchased my very first actual full-size bookshelf. Now the shelf is only half full of actual books because again, I didn't bring them all with me. And and the other half I've just filled with miscellaneous stuff. We're gonna start from top to bottom. My books are on the bottom shelves and all my miscellaneous others are on the top shelf. So, so up on the top of the shelf here I have a couple of cosplay wigs. They have flower crowns on them, some hair bows, just kind of general cosplay hair accessories on top because I figured it'd be cute to display them. I also have a row of Tsum Tsums here. We have Miss Judy Hopps, Stitch, Disgust, Minnie Mouse, Anna, Remy, Scar, and our crew from Tangle, Flynn Rider, Cassandra, Rapunzel, and Maximus. This next shelf is full of my pop figures. I have the trio from Miraculous Ladybug here, Ladybug, Cat Noir, and Hawk Moth. I have four out of the six heroes from Big Hero 6. I have Wasabi, Gogo, -Go, Honey Lemon, and Hero. I also have Belle from Beauty and the Beast, Rocket Raccoon, Tinkerbell, and Sadness from Inside Out. This next shelf also has just various Disney things on it. I have an Art of Tangled book, some pins. I have a Rapunzel Pop figure here. This is also where I've kept all of my bookmarks so far. I also have a couple different subscription box things, some art. I have my Owl Crate speaker, a Percy Jackson book sleeve, and a magic lamp. I'm saving my wishes for later though, so. These bottom three shelves have my actual books on them, so right up here is all of my soft covers for the most part, and then hard covers down below. I also have some jewelry items on this shelf, including this tiara here, and some necklaces and bracelets from various boxes. I also have two different bookish playing card boxes, and this tin, and that tin holds all of these various pins and pop sockets and keychains and stickers from various boxes. Should I go through and just explain why I haven't read all of these? So I'm gonna go through each of these books one by one and tell you why I own it and why I haven't read it yet. So let's just start over here and just go on down. So the first book over here is A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer. I love Chris Colfer's Land of Stories series. I reviewed two or three of those books way back when they first came out. So that's why I bought this. Why haven't I read it? I really haven't been in the mindset to read middle grade lately. And this isn't the same series as Land of Stories, but it is the same kind of fairy tale magic sort of thing going on. So maybe once I get in the mindset to read some middle grade, I will pick this up. Next here is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I actually have read this one, so this can go back. The Hazel Wood by Melissa Albert. I bought it because of the hype. I have not read it because creepy things aren't usually my cup of tea, and so maybe I'll wait for Halloween. Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I think I bought this because it was on sale. Yeah, um, all the coupons are still on it, actually. That's embarrassing. Oops. I have read the Infernal Devices trilogy. I've only read City of Bones from the Mortal Instruments, and I did not like it, and I have never finished the Mortal Instruments. This is a sequel to the Mortal Instruments, so I would be very confused if I read it, so I just haven't yet. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Again, have already read this one, so we can go back. Serafina by Rachel Hartman. I bought this on sale at a Barnes & Noble. I have one of those tables that were like, buy three for $5 each kind of thing, and I bought it. And I don't think there's ever really been a big kind of community or fandom around this book, but it looks pretty and it's about dragons, so maybe one day. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I got this for free at BookCon. It is personalized. Hold on, where is it? Fun fact, Pierce Brown told me my name was pretty whenever he signed it, and then he had his publicist or whoever was with him at the table write my name on a post-it, so that was fun. Why haven't I read this? 
I don't know, I feel kind of guilty that I haven't read it because it's personalized. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I bought this because I'm a massive fan of Victoria Schwab's archived series and it was never finished, rest in peace. I heard that the series was really great, I just haven't had the time to. There's really no justification for the reason why I haven't read most of these. I'm just lazy. Zodiac by Romina Russell. This was also part of one of those Barnes & Noble three for whatever sales. Again, awesome concept, don't have any justification for why I haven't started it yet. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I picked this up because I was looking for a more diverse romance and this is a gay romance set in the Victorian era? Question mark? I think. I did start reading the first like two or three chapters of this and then just stopped for some reason and never found the time to pick it back up again. Lover's Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. I had never heard of this before I saw it in an airport gift shop. So I bought it to read it on a plane, read the first three chapters, and then fell asleep on that plane and then never picked it back up. So Stitching Snow and Spinning Starlight by R.C. Lewis. These were both found at a half price books. They were two books in a series and I was on my fairy tale retelling kick whenever I saw these. Then I read things like Lunar Chronicles and A Court of Thorns and Roses, which were also advertised as fairy tale retellings, even though one of those is very much not quite a fairy tale retelling. Anyway, Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. I have already read this one. It is a very cute contemporary romance. Highly would recommend. Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu and Bone Cryer's Moon by Caitlin Purdy were both books that I received in subscription boxes recently. I love Marie Lu. This book looks really cute. I want to read both of these, but they're kind of brand new, so I kind of have a justification for why I haven't read these two yet. Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. Now, this is a fun story. I actually read Anne and the French Kiss years ago, and I kind of hated it. But this was at a book sale at my local library, and it was $3, and it's a really nice quality hardcover, so I figured I'd buy it and try the series out again. Reverie by Ryan Lasala. This was an airport purchase that I actually did read on the plane, so that one's all squared away. All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I got this one in an owl crate, and I actually have read a about a third of it. That's where my bookmark is there. This book has a little bit too much body horror and gore for me. It's a little too bloody and oof for me, so I had to stop. But maybe one day I'll pick it back up. Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. This was also a subscription box book, and I have not started it because, again, lazy. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo. I bought this at Barnes & Noble one day when I was looking for some less talked about newer fantasy. This was last year. There's also a bookmark in this one. I'm on chapter 12, but paused and then never picked up. Not really sure why. I think it was just more releases were coming out that I was more excited for, so I was like, I'll put this Side, and then I never got back to it. The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. This is a middle grade book and again diving into middle grade it's kind of hard for me unless I really get myself into the mindset of it. Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. I bought this also at a half price books because it was one of the only books that I had heard of about four or five years ago that included a trans woman character and so I wanted to read it for the representation but just again never got to it. I'm really bad at making excuses for myself. Okay. Ruby Red by Kristen Gear. I bought this back when it was super hyped up a couple years ago. Read the first like three chapters and for whatever reason, whenever books are translated from a different language into English, I have trouble reading it because I know it's translated. And like if I didn't know that, it'd probably be fine. But because I had this weird conception in my head of I'm not reading the original writing, I'm reading a translation, it kind of ruins it for me. I hate that and I'm trying to get myself out of that mindset. But reading this, I couldn't stop thinking about like, man, I wish I read German so I could actually like read the original writing. It's weird, I know. I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Naj Rishi. This was also an Owl Crate book. Again, why haven't I picked it up? I don't know. This came with Crier's War and I did read Crier's War as soon as I got it, but I think it was just the intimidation of having to read two subscription book boxes at once that kind of made me prioritize one over the other. The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. I literally just bought this at Barnes & Noble because the cover was pretty. I cannot tell you what the synopsis of this is. I really don't know. Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oakes. Pretty sure I bought this because of this lovely bargain price $3.97 sticker on the back of it. And again, fairy tale retelling, so that was part of the hype for it. The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This was bought the same day I bought The Devouring Grey, and also for the same reason I bought The Devouring Grey, which is that it has a pretty cover. I also have two Shay Earnshaw books on my shelf now that I realize. I'm gonna put them next to each other. Let them hang out with them be sisters. Battle Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is a brand new release, so I just haven't gotten to it yet. I am very hesitant to jump back into the Hunger Games series because I know with some certain authors, whenever they revisit their old series a couple years later, it is more for the money than for the story, and so far I've heard good things about this, so I'm hoping that's not the case. Hopefully when I enjoy this, it's also super thick and I'm kind of intimidated by how many pages this is. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This was another book that I bought solely for the representation of having a gay pairing in it. However, I was told that I probably should read Fangirl before I read this and I just didn't, so... P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This one I feel kind of bad about. I read the first To All the Boys book, loved it, started reading this one, and spoilers for the series if you haven't read it, I am not Team Peter Kavinsky. So when I realized on page 167 of this book that it was very much 
Team Kavinsky, I kind of stopped reading. And I brought it with me because I told myself I would finish reading it before the movie came out, and now the movie's been out for, like, five months, so. Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly, yet another case of me wanting the fairy tale retelling but already being too engrossed in the fairy tale retelling that I like to start a new one. Wonder Woman Warbringer and Ninth House, both by Lee Bardugo. I adore Lee Bardugo, especially the Six of Crows duology, as everyone else does. I am a big superhero fan, but I am more Marvel than DC, so I haven't really been able to pick up this. And as far as Ninth House goes, Lee Bardugo's writing is very non-expositional. You're kind of just thrown into that universe, and I remember I had a hard time picking up Six of Crows because of that and I feel the same about this. When I read the first like couple of pages I was already like so lost and I feel like I need to really take the time to get into the universe and really dive deep and enjoy this so I'm gonna put it off until I really feel confident that I can throw myself into the whole thing. The Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. This was an Owl Crate book. I was not very interested in the synopsis, but it seemed cool enough, so I decided to keep it rather than sell it or trade it for another book. Magonia by Maria Devana Headley. Headley? Headley? Apologies if I'm pronouncing any of these authors' names wrong. As you can see, half price book sticker. So, this was also one of those books that had a good amount of hype around it when it first came out, but the hype has since died down, and I also find it hard to read a book when there's not many people to talk to about it. The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I bought this along with Lola at my library book sale. Again, love Holly Black, and I would love to read something that's about vampires other than fairies from her, but just got this, so I haven't had a chance to dive into it yet. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson is a book that I already have read, so I can put this one back, but I also really loved this book a lot. Highly recommend it. A Reaper at the Gates by Sabah Tahir. I also feel really, really bad about this one because I love the Ember and the Ashes series. I read the first books, tore through them like crazy, and then had to wait a year and a half for this to come out, or a year at least, and I've literally completely forgotten the plot of the Ember books, and I feel so horrible. So I'm gonna have to go back and read the first two books and then dive into this one. And the last one comes out this year, so maybe it'll finally like push me towards finishing. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Now, Marissa Meyer's Lunar Chronicles is one of my favorite series of all time. I adore her. I also read her Renegade trilogy and loved it, but Heartless, I did start the first two or three chapters and it just didn't really do it for me. I don't know why. This is also the second book on here that's a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, so maybe I just have to get myself in an Alice in Wonderland state of mind. I don't know. And I Darken by Kristen Wright. Again, half price book sticker there, so bought this on sale. This was another series that had so much hype around it, and I feel like I would really like it, but for whatever reason, I've just never even tried to open it up to the first page. I really have no excuse for half of these, honestly. It's just me not feeling in the mood for it. I really have to be in a reading mood to start a new series. Stalking Jack the Ripper and Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Manoscalo. Similar to All the Stars and Teeth, I am not really a big, huge mystery murder kind of fan. Uh, kind of grosses me out a little bit. And creepy things, I have to be in a certain mood, so I might just wait again until Halloween time to read these. I do try to get myself more into mystery, but it's just the creepy factor of it all. Like, I read to relax, not to raise my heart rate. And I have a feeling that with all the hunting and stalking and skulls and crossbones that this is going to be one of those series where I'm going to have some suspense happening. This is the Windswept Trilogy by Caitlin Bellamy. Includes Windswept, Ink Spice, and Wayfinder. These I found at my Barnes & Noble. I had never heard of them. The covers were pretty and they are all autographed so I figured I may as well just buy a trilogy. So out of all the actual books on my bookshelf, I've only read five of them. If you guys have any recommendations for which one of these I should start first, if you have read them, if one of these is your favorite, please let me know because I would love to dive into one. Actually, you probably shouldn't because I have like 10 books out of my library right now that I'm working on reading, so leave your recommendations in the comments and I'll read it in like two months when I'm caught up. It's just so nice to have an actual bookshelf in my room now. And hopefully this shelf is just the start to my ultimate life goal of having a library in my house. But until that happens, I have a nice little start. So thank you guys so much for watching this. If you have any recommendations out of the ones I already own, let me know in those comments and I will see you guys in the next video.